One of our most treasured supporters was civil rights activist Mrs. Rosa Parks. In 1955, she sparked a revolution by refusing to give up her seat on a segregated Alabama bus. The driver demanded that I give this seat up to a white man. I didn't feel that I was being treated as a human being. I refused to give up this seat. I said no, and I wouldn't give it up. From that moment, she became the mother of the civil rights movement. One evening, years later, H received a phone call from a friend saying Mrs. Parks had been attacked in her home in Detroit. And they heard about our Heroes and Artists in Residence program. Could she come and stay here when she got out of the hospital for a few days for free? Wow. She was here approximately 10 years, which is incredible. And that's how Mrs. Rosa Parks became part of our Heroes in Residence program. H wasn't the best student, so initially she had no idea who Mrs. Parks was other than a wonderful person, of course. Over time, their bond grew stronger and Mrs. Parks became a mentor and mother figure to age. I don't think we would have been as close if I had known. I would have been scared of her. Mrs. Parks loved entertaining friends at the mansion. She held formal gospel brunches where everyone wore a hat and white gloves. And nearly every year, on her birthday, she would hold fabulous tea parties. Across the street from 2020, there lived a grumpy old couple who often caused trouble. One year, during one of Mrs. Parks' tea parties, they called the police to say that people of a different colour were breaking into the mansion. The police had no other choice but to investigate the matter. After the incident, Lady H, as Mrs. Parks affectionately called her, apologised for the neighbour's behaviour. Mrs. Parks just turned to her and said, Dear, this is OK. When those people go to sell their house, you need to buy it for me. That's how you deal with racism. Lady H used to own a big yellow school bus. When Mrs. Parks had important meetings in DC, H would drive her there in the bus. Imagine this pulling up to the White House. Mrs. Parks always donned a huge childlike grin as they chugged along through the streets. The O Museum in the Mansion is now officially on the African American Heritage Trail, and rightfully so. She often stayed here with members of her Pathways to Freedom Foundation and her best friend and president of the Rosa and Raymond Parks Institute for Self-Development, Mrs. Elaine Steele. In 1999, Mrs. Rosa Parks was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, the highest award a civilian can receive. The medal was designed by our very own artist in residence, Artist Lane. Mrs. Lane and Mrs. Parks were both from Detroit, both activists in their own right, and had been good friends for many years. Mrs. Lane even gave us a maquette she used for the medal. You can find it on the second floor. Well, in 1999, Mrs. Parks was invited to meet the Pope in St. Louis. She took Lady H with her. On the way to meet him, Lady H helped Mrs. Parks craft a letter to read to the Pope. This picture shows Mrs. Parks reading out that very letter. Amongst other things, it said, the issue of racism still plagues our world. It is a cancer that has troubled me and others throughout my life. As a most respected, honored, and moral leader of this world, I ask your patience to address racism with your words and example. Later that day, Lady H asked why she had been invited to come, of all people, especially since she was white. Mrs. Parks turned to her and said, Oh dear, I didn't know you were white. Mrs. Rosa Parks passed away on the 24th of October 2005 in her Detroit apartment. Her body laid in state at the Capitol Rotunda, the first woman to have ever been given this honor. And so, even in death, she continued to challenge boundaries. H was a pallbearer at her funeral services in Montgomery, Alabama, Washington, D.C., and Detroit, Michigan. Lady H, her husband Ted Sparrow, and their children, Z, Hannah, and Sonny, accompanied Mrs. Parks' body between the three funeral locations. Each of the children took one leg of the journey. It was a fitting way for the family to bid farewell to this wonderful lady. Remember the couple across the street who called the police during Mrs. Parks' birthday celebrations? Well, in 2008, they moved to California, and just as Mrs. Parks predicted, Lady H bought their house. And that is how the Rosa Parks safe house came to be. Though Mrs. Parks is physically gone, her spirit continues to live on. 
What she did, or indeed refused to do back then, has become what we take as the norm today. We hope we have given you a glimpse into her fabulous life and inspired you with her stories. Now, go and enjoy the rest of your adventure and let it take you where it does. And while you explore each cranny of this wondrous place, while you get lost and found again, try to imagine, just for one second, the grand, the bold, the gracious Mrs. Rosa Parks walking through these same corridors. <laughs>